Pins down, the tank is down, the plate is down, the wiring is done, the air ride is done, the lines run up here, the radiator needs the fan switch and the uh, thermal switch connected, yeah. probably the power board of the battery and the relay will to uh, the thermostat, and that's it, really don't need any. If the thermostat's adjustable right here, mm -hmm. the bulb goes in right here, see it? Yeah. Look at it. Bastard. Unless that's the one I found. <laughs> I didn't know it. I didn't know it. It's alright, I didn't get no. It's just a Chevy brake spring. What else? I'll paint the mirrors side. on. Put our little Willie's mirror on. Isn't that cool? These valve cover ones suck. They don't stay on. I'm not tight, I'm just saying the head. Yeah, they probably Some of them just friggin' fall off. Yeah, I know. Uh, I got wipers. Three, two, one. Off the mark. Four minutes, 30 seconds. I need a bottom radiator hose. I gotta spring up the radiator. Um, are you still on air right here? Oh, yeah, we are. Air suspension still holding it up. A wee bit. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, yeah, Mira, you don't like it? You adjust it. Just bend it, huh? Yeah. yeah. It only tilts down so far, so... Oh, and it's a flat mirror. It's not like it's convex or anything. You literally gotta look around and, you know... Yeah. But it's old and it's cool. sections to make a circle and then you get a precisely freaking carve this thing you know yeah but it'll look cool that's it i'm going in yeah yeah i just set the toe it was off just a touch just enough that's wearing tires on a little bit on the inside mm. so i can pull the front out just a little Here's a bowl and pan. Done. Camera's been on, by the way. <laughs> Your ride is done. We just gotta collect, connect our electric fan. Yeah, collect. Which is, here's my relay. Here's my thermostat. And there's the bulb that goes into the radiator. All goes in the, the hose. Call it a night. The Willie's Mira. Don clammed up. <laughs> so the wiring isn't done. Don, still got more freaking wires. It'll just go to the battery anyway. Yeah, no. And the alternator. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Thanks, buddy. Anytime. <laughs> Have a good night. Okay, I kind of mumbled it when Don was here, but I'll go over it with you. The headlights, we're going from front to rear. The cam bumper, I'm not adding the Model A stuff on. All done with that. Look at the way it is. Headlights are done. The horn has two wire ties holding it on right now. I need to make a bracket. The grill is done except for I need two 516 uh, bolts and nuts that are uh, a certain height. I think it's two inch. Because underneath that plate goes a Chevy brake spring to hold it up off the frame. And I got a nine lock under it. Aside from that, the radiator has to be wired. Um, I have the plug for the electric fan. It does have a, uh, a relay, and it's got the thermostat with the bulb coming in the top. Next thing from the front, the shocks are done and tight. Uh, the I-beam is done and tight. The brakes are done and connected all the way up to the engine mount. Um, that belt is temporary, that V-belt, so that's coming off. The pin's down. The bullets bolted down. The Evelyn plates bolted down. I used um, I to be a little creative. I wanted to fill in that hole quick with something plastic, and uh, I had one of these things. It was all cracked around the edge to the end, so I cut a big section out, and that's where it is. It goes behind that, just to cover the electrics. Uh, it's going to get wet no matter what you do. You're going to have problems no matter what you do. So, Fuel pump is good. Just need a fuel line. Uh, the headlights are done and wired. So all the electricals in the Evelyn box under there. Um, the radiator hose is what you see me messing with earlier. These things are crap. I am not using those things. These hand crank wing nut hose clamp garbage. This is how good they hold. I could probably take it off. I'm not going to try though. <laughs> the airbags are done. They are connected together, and they go through this tube, and this tube runs down the side of the frame, as you've seen. goes up to the firewall. Um, top hose is easy. It's done. I put some black silicone in there to make sure that it doesn't leak out near the, uh, the bulb line, because the bulb actually goes in here to turn on the electric fan. Um, 
The engine's good to go. I just got to put some more electrics on it and uh, connect the heater core and get some clamps for the heater core lines because they're just sitting on there. There's no clamps. Um, Carburetor is bolted down a gasket. It has a fuel line all the way down to the pump. Although I don't like this, but I put it on anyway. Um, heater hoses gotta go on. Transmission dipstick I gotta get the right one and put it in. It's here somewhere. It's in a box. Uh, the oil dipstick I gotta put in. The exhaust I'm waiting for. The throttle's connected even if it is temporary. That's a little piece of angle iron I made the other day. The yeah, Allison is mounted as you seen the other day. I put this on today, that old Willie's mirror from the junkyard. Of everything that that Willie's truck had, the only thing that survived was the horn and the mirror. And there's the mirror and there's the horn. That horn is sick. It's like a bull horn. Probably only 6 volt and I'm pumping 12 volts through it, so it's really, it's horrid. Um, in my Jeep, and I might take it out, I have one of those old, um, it's like a shriek horn, like a, like a fire truck big chrome one that goes in the front of a fire truck. I think it was made in 1971. Uh, I don't know if it was for a car alarm or what, but I might have it on this. Just because it's like a, like an air raid horn. That's it. Wicked loud. And as we know, brakes are done. Complete front to rear all the way up to the firewall. The rears come up to the firewall too, but the connection between the brake booster and that has to be made. And my master cylinder has to be put back in. Uh, I need a spacer. I got to put back in on the pedal assembly. I'm missing the bolt for a pedal assembly. I lost it a long time ago. And we know that nothing works without the key. Directionals are done. Headlight switch is done. We need a dash insert and $445 in moon gauges if I'm that desperate. Um, that's a good one. These bolts. That's a really strong connection. And they are half inch, but those are head bolts. I need to get, uh, I don't even think there's a nut on them. Nope. I need to get some real half inch bolts, and I think I have to take up a, a couple thousands of space in there, but nothing crazy. But I gotta have real bolts. Those things are Chevy head bolts. They'd work, but they kind of loosen the Monte Carlo bushing that's in there. Um, the steering, when I'm exactly, completely, and know that I'm done. It has to be welded right there. Just a little tack. Then pull it out and weld it. Now, right now, I'm not sure if this is where the column is going to go or a little deeper in or a little higher up. So, it's sitting where it's sitting for now. Which is not a bad height. Oil pressure gauge is going to go inside the car when I get gauges. My alternator. I'd like to get the real clip that belongs on this. Not just some ring terminals, you know. Some H clips. But the pin is mounted solid. Um, I had to use a expanding... Uh, what do you call it, like a lag bolt in the bottom after I drilled it 3 eighths and then expand the bolt deep in it and then uh, pull the threads up and out. It worked pretty good. It's not moving. I mean, if you hung on it, you could snap it off, but that's not the idea. It's just, uh, and it's not real visible. You'd have to be on this side of the car to see it. If you're over here, you don't see it. It's one of those things you got to go, oh, what the hell's a bowling pin doing there? No. Same thing with the bullet. It's on the inside of the frame because... The coolant line off the bottom of the water pump has to go there. And that's a straight shot. i got to buy a pose that goes off that tube and down. And that green tube right there is actually a 2-inch OD, uh, I think it's 8-inch wall stainless steel. One of the ones my dad had. Um, the fan is almost self-sufficient, although I have to, you know, find a way to shut it off. And a way to, uh, well, not so much shut it off, but um, i got to put a fuse in line with it. Even I could use a cartridge fuse. You know what? I know which cartridge fuse I'm going to use. When I was in the, those school buses, I thought that was cool. Old school! When I was in those school buses, I found a nice cartridge fuse holder. Where is it? Red. Oh, it's here. Oh, it's here. Oh, it's in the bottom drawer. Oh, okay. I ran out of room for my electrics, so I was like throwing things on the floor. It's here. It's a um, nice red waterproof uh, cartridge fuse holder. And we can stick that up under here so that way there is, you know, a fusible link in line so the fan isn't just always on. Um, it'll probably be wired so the thermostat decides whether or not the fan's on even if the car's off. So 
but I've been basing everything, all my hot leads have been coming off of the starter. Um, the starter goes right to the battery here and the ignition switch goes up to the dash, but um, if I do wire the fan, it's going to be connected hot to the starter with a fuse in line. And the thermostat, I decide if it's off or on. Um, you can always have a kill switch somewhere, but why would you kill your fan? That's not a bad fan. It came out of a, uh, oh God, what was it? It was like a Buick Riviera, and it has that, they call it a swirl fan or something like that. You buy them at these hot rod stores, and they're like $200. This one was free. All I had to do was grind a couple of the stupid little wings off of it um, because of the way it mounted to the back of the other radiator. And this one's cool because it had a flat spot on the bottom of the plastics. And uh, that's all bed rail. That whole thing that holds that grill in is bed rail. I'm talking side of the road. Somebody threw it out. Bed rail. But uh, the flat spot sits on the bottom. The fan sits in the hole, and there's one screw right here that holds the whole thing in. And it doesn't hit or nothing. It works beautiful. I've already had it hooked up uh, nice and quiet. Goes like a bat out of hell. Um, nice unit for free. Thermostat switch and the relay a nice old gentleman sent me and said, Hey, I'm not going to use this. Take it. Um, I forget who. It might have been Joe in Detroit. Um... 40-something. This guy worked 40-something years for GM. He has sent me all kinds of stuff. A really nice guy. Thanks, Joe. But uh, I've been out here most of the day working in the driveway. That was pretty cool. Um, beautiful day out. Thank God. It's about time. Let's go to the back. The column is in. It's tight. Uh, most of the electrics is done. We have an e-brake, it's just it's disconnected. The um, battery, i got to make another battery box. But I want to wait because my drive shaft is uh, lower than the battery. And I might be sinking this battery further back and further down. So it's at least lower than the shelf. Um, I do have ammo cans. I could hide this thing in ammo cans. That would be pretty cool. Uh, we'll do the floors in aluminum and wood and whatnot. Uh, I need a piece of angle iron for up front. To go across over the transmission where the uh, flows would either bolt down to or weld down to, you know, where they would start and end. Um, some place for the firewall to connect to across the bottom above the transmission, things like that. Um, the rear end, like I said, has been uh, spun back where it belongs. I got to pull this pan up and uh, connect the air ride and then connect it to this tank. I have to make some end caps for this one because the one I had were stainless and that won't work. It would, but uh, Dad's will just go with stale and we'll tap them and all that crap. That one's just going to be a blank end. Now, these wings were something I thought of. Now, because my car had no um, running boards per se, I'll show you what my car had for running boards. I have one of them. I have one of them right here. This is what my car had for running boards. As I step on things. Completely rotted now you think wow you can make that over yeah the rotted it is this was the only one the other one was completely gone i mean you pick it up and it crumbled i couldn't even take it this was nailed to a piece of wood back in the day don't look at that that is a 1934 speaker from chevy it's the housing i was crazy one day and i painted it red i was going to do something with it but i'll save it that is the rocker. It's not just flat. It has a bow to it. Um, it was nailed. You can see the little holes. It was nailed to a piece of wood. That piece of wood has long since gone. And that's pretty much what was on the side of your car. Rotted. Love to buy. I'd love to just go bang and buy a brand new set. I don't even know if they make them. i got to look that up too. Because that would save so much time in making these rockers. Otherwise I'm going to be making them. But... I figured while I was there, my frame is very narrow when I was making it. Why can't we put some wings off the side um, and make them useful for something? And as time went by, I looked into air ride and I was like, hey, these aren't tapped into. We can make these the air tanks. You know, it's only going to hold maybe 25 pounds tops of air. And uh, that's the plan. I don't think there's anything on the front of this one. No, that's the one. This one's for the back. So it's going to need two holes. One for the air compressor to connect and fill it, and one going to the airbag with like a check valve so only the air could go. Uh, a check valve, it'll be the compressor, 
then a check valve going to the tank, and then this line will go up to the thing, and I'll have some kind of a pressure release that it can only go up to like 20 pounds because it, it takes literally, I think 12 pounds will pick up uh, the rear end, and it only takes like 15 to pick up the front, of which it's still up, I think, right now. Yeah, it's up a little bit. Um, maybe I'll set the camera up and show you what air ride looks like when it goes up on this thing. Because I'm almost on the I-beam right now, and this car relies totally on the airbags. As my 70-something Nova grill emblem. It's broken. The clips are missing, so I just wire tied it on. I've had it forever. I don't even remember where I got it. I am a big collector of Chevy emblems. Um, this one might look familiar to Peak. Or Mike. It's the one on the front of his, what is it, 41 Chevy truck? I think it's 41, 51. Um, they're everywhere. I just look in here. I think there's another one. I just seen it. Chevrolet manual. I was showing you that earlier. I've got a nice one in here. Big one that says Chevrolet. But I've got all the little blue ones from the newer cars and Cadillac logos and things like that. I wish I could find it. I just seen it. But like anything, it's lost. Lost in the mess. There yeah, goes my mask. It's awesome. There it is. Okay, Joe, what's that one go to? That is about five inches across, stainless steel, and it has the clip. You don't want to know what this thing goes for. I could sell this on eBay and probably buy half of my gauges. <laughs> Anybody want it? That's an old one. I think it's, um, oh, I forget. No, I forget. Imagine that. Oh, keep looking. That one. That's a classic. Curved grill. Clips are still there. Very unusual. Don't know what it goes to. I, for, I forget. Um, I got a bunch of the blue ones. I got, you know, from Cavalier. I like the blue ones. I had a few of them. I think there's one in here. We have our ETC logo from the Caddy. I'm gonna send this to Rich. Put on the hot rod. The rat rod. Six shooter, the shifter handle. I don't, don't even know where I got it. I'm not putting it on my car. <laughs> ah, they're here somewhere, but. It's been a long day. The grill's back in. That sucker is heavy. The radiator weighs a freaking ton. I didn't take many pictures today. It was uh, set it up and let it run type of day because uh, I don't want to mess with the camera too much I did take a few so we'll have them here but um moving right along we got a lot of stuff done today too one more thing of all the things I kept um, the 31 now had a interior light round thing like you've seen in everything it hasn't changed in 80 years um, well they changed it recently now it's a piece of plastic um, it was a piece of plastic back then, but it was more like a cellulite uh, material. Um, I sold my interior light, the original. It was in really nice shape. I got a lot of money for it, so I was impressed. But um, the idea was sell everything and keep the body and go from there. The one thing I kept was the switch that turned on the interior light. Now this thing, you'd sit in the driver's seat and you'd reach off to the right and it was sticking out of the B pillar. So it was literally right here on the car. And it was a little toggle switch. It was broken inside and it completely disintegrated, but I figured, well, we'll keep the fascia to it and uh, we use it somewhere. Nice, cool scroll design. And the other day, I got one of these. Tiny, tiny little toggle switch. It's almost identical, but it's in a box. And it's a different type. It's uh, like laminated. But uh, if I can get this one out, this one uses like a metal thing on the back. It's pressed into it. you got to drill that off. So i got to be very gentle and drill those little rivet things off. And then I could reuse the fascia with that little switch, I hope. But uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Even if I put it behind it, I don't have to make that big hole. I could put it behind it. And I don't necessarily need the box, but... That is the B-pillar interior switch. I wonder what that one's worth. Even though it's broken. Now, the old switches were real cheesy. They, uh, you touch them and they broke. Especially after 80 years. And it was, um, 
You can tell it was screwed in the wood because he used it flat, flat head screws to hold it in. I'm choking. There's crap on my thing. Here's my new phone. $400. Thank you. Somebody bought it for me. I didn't really want a cell phone, but I got a cell phone. Everybody says, does your headlight bar touch? Not by a quarter of an inch. Plenty of room, and that's where it goes right there. It's on the holes. They're just not bolted down. These are 3 16 plate wings that come off the side of the uh, bed rails. And they're all welded to it and shimmed and all that. And uh, they'll work good once I get the springs and the correct bolts. And I'm looking at it now going, crap, you know what you forgot? The sway bar. I never made a sway bar. Okay, have a good night. Ouch. Just when you think I'm going in, I found the plug for my fan. Good plug. And I wired it to the thermostat and the relay, which you can't really see. It's back here. And all I have left is one power lead. And now this power lead... This whole thing is like self-sufficient. It doesn't have an on-off switch. The thermostat is the on-off switch. This is going to go right to the starter lead when I get the correct connector and I'll hide it inside. And there is a 20-amp uh, fuse in here. The fuse is connected to the fan and the relay. Anything powered here, put it that way. That's just the switch. That's just the switch. The fan gets the load, but the relay needs the power to uh, activate the high side to kick the fan on. So this can hide in here. This is pretty cool. This was in that uh, school bus. 20 amp cartridge fuse. Hide inside a little case. And we just stick it in the corner. Okay, so once I got my power connected, I can hide the fuse. And I just have a uh, connector on there for now. It was actually on there. I'm going to put one of those hoops with the rubber insulator on the bolt. This is the ground for the relay and the fan. Now, as long as I have a ground from here to the frame or somewhere, probably on the back to the frame, I'll be all set. But it's like 9 o'clock. I have been out here all day. Get my phone. Yep, more wiring. Look how nice that is. All loomed up out over here nothing hanging doesn't get in the way of the fan I actually could I get enough slack I could wire tie it down if I do a little hole actually I don't even need a hole I can just wire tie it down but uh, I gotta go in guys it's um it's like a nine o'clock you know we can't be out here all day screwing around you think we're building a hot rod <laughs> so you have a good night